Good morning, wonderful Nigerians, and you're welcome to your favorite program today in Living Radio 90.9. As usual, like we promised earlier this week, that uh, our program Issues of the Moment will be coming up today. And the Issues of the Moment today, we'll be looking at this topic, Nigerians are too poor to revolt. This is a statement credited to uh, a Nigerian governor, Governor Sule Sule Lamido of Jigawa State. And we also want to compare it with uh, the statement made by the Federal uh, Fed, uh, the federal House, uh, that is uh, the National Assembly, and as well concurred by Mr. President, that the poor should be allowed to breathe. We are going to look at this. In today's uh, program, I have from my far left, I have a uh, Honorable Tony Abanyam, democracy. Honorable Tony Abanyam is a, is a media practitioner and also the one-time uh, legislator in Aban, not local government area, one of the pioneers of uh, the uh, PDP in Ibia State here. Tony, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Prof, for having me. And uh, thank you so much, our listener and uh, our viewers. After him, I have... Uh, Comrade Namde Lekwachi, Comrade Namde Lekwachi is a historian, a political affairs analyst and a public affairs analyst. He is also a man who loves dealing with debts and also numbers. He is also a televangelist. Comrade, welcome to the program. Yes, thank you for having me. It's a good day to be here. And good day to our listeners. All right, today. We are looking at the the statement as alleged made by Sule Lamido, His Excellency, the Governor of uh, Jigawa State, and I want to I want us to compare the two of them. The Governor Sule Lamido of Jigawa State was quoted last week as saying that Nigeria cannot break up because members of the elite are united in preserving the advantages over the over the advantages over the masses irrespective of their differences of tribe and religion and now when you look at this statement you compare it also with what uh, happened last time the national assembly said the poor should be allowed to breathe and then what is this and then uh, i also want to compare this with the statement that the leaders in nigeria some other one Yoruba man said, we don't have leaders, what we have is ruiners. But to re respect the leaders in Nigeria, call them rulers. That they have so weaponized poverty in Nigeria. And that is why they are doing what they are doing. Uh, let me start with you, comrade. Yeah. I, I think um, uh, the statement, uh, when I first came across it in the daily, so I started uh, fact-checking to see whether actually this statement uh, uh, was true. But up until now, I've never seen any um, uh, counterfactual uh, article or story saying uh, the, the story or the um, uh, statements as alleged made by Sule Lamido of Jigawa State, that's the former governor, um, that that statement actually um, was put out of context or that the governor uh, didn't uh, actually, uh, in, 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 in fact, that it was a media misrepresentation. But um, to bring it back to what it is, I think Sule Lamido spoke uh, erroneously uh, using the part, this part of the country to judge the rest. And it's very wrong. I think it's only in, I'm not saying it to demean any particular part of the country or any region, with due respect to the North, but due to the inherent political structure, the religious and political architecture there. You know, they have the um, uh, so-called talakawas, the poor of the poor, the common, uh, who cannot even unite and come from, who are even hoodwinked, who are being misled by the um, elites, you understand, to adopt a particular form of life or even it could be religious elite, it could be political elite. You cannot say same or you cannot say the same thing for um, the southeast or the southwest, even the entire north, political enlightenment is beginning to take root. So you cannot actually um, uh, um, uh, relegate re 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 all the northerners when it comes to political awareness, presence of mind, ability to interrogate government policies, 
or even civic engagement you understand so what the man said ah, could be found or situated in previous statements whether you talk about uh, Madhu Bello or others so his statement also tries to capture the way uh, the political class after achieving what they are interested in that state capture weaponizes poverty and that's why you see elections if votes one one a single vote is about five thousand ten thousand for four years and when you divide it you see what the political class means for the rest of us and he is speaking from the elitist position but not generally now you understand okay so to me what, 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 what he has actually said could be situated in the context of one the region he's coming from two the unwritten convention you understand uh, where we see electorate or the people as the, uh, 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 as, uh, as as those whose interests could be decent and then played with for example before i came to this place do you know i used i tricked from from that rail as you why because we have government that is not sensitive enough what does it take go 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 government to put an announcement to that effect or use the holiday period to embark on such project but they didn't even care we just woke, 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 woke up in the morning and then we are about going to our businesses and we started seeing soldiers deployed everywhere um the soldiers the police all of them there beating people back and and, and what have you so this just captures what the political class are after state capture and then and um, weaponization of poverty and subjugation of the people all right uh, uh, uh honorable tony i you know you've been in the system and then uh if accusing fingers are appointed i think so, uh, uh, people like you should also be accused that uh, you know because uh, uh, uh when you talk about democracy here uh your you your your party started it here and you were also one of the legislators and the local government then and then talking about this weaponizing of weapon by uh leaders or rulers whichever way i don't want i don't just want us to look at this as a uh, as a statement credited to lamido but look at it as what is happening in governance from this point i will now start separating between my friends and my enemies <laughs> <laughs> you know if there is a revolution in nigeria today <laughs> somebody will tell the boys no one i know that you can tell me but uh, be that as it may, um, Sule Lamido may have, uh, may have uh, delivered what I can describe very bitter national truth. Yes. I want to tell you that um, poverty. Because um, the other day, I also just said that um, that Nigerians, the good Lord Jonathan was uh, feeding Nigerians. And that was why they had all the strength to come and uh, start uh, occupying, occupying the, the country, <laughs> Lagos and Canada, everywhere. <laughs> the former president and even the incumbent president. Mm. And all of them, even pastors that we respect in this. Noble country, Laureate and the rest and, of them. Uh, what do you call him? Uh, Tushin Devaki. All of them. Family father, everybody came out and marched on the street. You know, all the top musicians and the actresses and actresses came. And that was full and it cost of uh, less than 200 there. And the entire country was locked down. They look at it now that nobody is feeling normal, that hunger is everywhere, that the, that the country has been declared poverty capital of the world. Can you imagine that? So, who is demonstrating? A liter of petrol is headed towards 1,000 naira. And then we demonstrated over a liter of well, less than 200 naira. Now, it has now taken its real shape. You know, nobody is uh, demonstrating. What I mean by taking re its real shape is what Sweden Lamido has just stated. He's not alleged. He stated the obvious, a very bitter factual truth. Because I want to tell you that in recent times, it's no longer a matter of the poor complaining. But in those days, we watch a movie, in those are black and white TV on um, MT Hammer, a program they call The Rich or So Cry. Today, it's, it's coming to reality. You know, 
Those that have fleets of cars in their houses, you see them drinking. You that have a little car, you pick them on the road, giving them a little, um, you know, push up to where they're going. They will start complaining in your car, almost crying. They tell you that, you know, I have two, three cars in my house, but I can't afford them. How can I be traveling to my village and I will spend 40,000 naira in full alone to attend the prayer? That's the situation it has gotten to. The violence started the obvious. Look at what happened in Tunisia. The, uh, the Arab Spring. Arab Spring, yes. 29, 2010, 2011. We saw what happened. Who led it? A young person, a young lady. Yeah. Of about 21 years. Boy, is here. Graduated out of uh, school for years. No job, no job. Was trying to turn around to do see what she can do for herself. And tax collectors came. That was how, what led to the sacking of Mubarak, who was in, in power for over 30 years. That was what chased and killed Gaddafi. Who was like a colossus, who was like an emperor, you know, everybody's afraid of him, who was plotting terrorist activities here and there, as alleged by America, you know, and Britain. So, what are we saying? It can't happen here because of our religious background, because of our ethnic background, because of our social background. I want to tell you that in a place where we have to make sacrifices, nothing works there. Freedom is not free. The Israel will travel to today, you come back at the end of the day and start answering uh, Professor Chiridun Adele, JP. Honorable Tony Abadim, JP. What made them think strong? Sacrifice, blood. If we don't do that here, nothing will work. I want to tell, I've been telling people that if you are talking about change, you have to change. If we don't change, Nothing will change in this country. It's not about media hiding. It's not about coming to clap for Gwari like uh, uh, Tilibu was uh, uh, applauding and clapping for him. And I was told to people that you don't expect Tilibu and Femi and Nishino to say anything in the contract. Because millions of Nigerians, over 200 and something millions of, of Nigerians, are there languishing in poverty. And you are here picking dollar on the streets. If you sleep, you pick dollar. If you fly, you pick dollar. You ride on the road, you pick dollar. Very hard to see that. Those of us that are, are, are journalists, he's not better than some of us. But look at him. Made a media aid to the president for eight years, was flying across the country, across, across the globe with the president, and picking dollars as Esther could. What do you expect him to write about Buhari? While his colleagues are there, still editing scripts and uh, sleep, uh, having sleepless stories, nights, yeah. stories to make up a story in, in their newspapers. You know, then, Tinibu, you know, what do you expect Tinibu to say? That Buhari could have said, my friend, you go nowhere because of the strength and power of the Nigerian president who decides everything, who, who everything starts on his table. So, Tinibu couldn't have said otherwise other than telling us that Buhari is the best thing that, have, that has ever happened to this country. And he said he's going to continue from where the man stops. The man came and landed us on a fry pan. And this one now came and we are now in fire. So, it is a continuum. All right. You just handed over the button to him and Anyway, let's continue to move. Anyway. All right, let us uh, let us move ahead because uh, looking at the statement that is uh, also credited to him, uh, we we'll keep saying alleged because uh, once we're not, uh, you know, an eyewitness. He said uh, Nigeria is too weak. He said, "Who will break this country? Who will break it? And how is the person going to do that? Is it the ordinary Hausa man in Sokoto or the Ibo man for Kanaiza or the full, uh, the Yoruba woman who is selling kerosene and so on?" And he also went further to say that they are so united, that the elite is so united, that they don't have to, they don't, they, they the poor, they don't have the capacity, you know, to talk about breaking Nigeria. That is to say that this thing is a deliberate act. And I want you also, comrade, as you look into this, I want you all to, to compare this with the statement made by one of the governors, the Abia state governor sometime who said he can never empower his enemy. As if this uh, common, patri uh, common uh, patrimony is meant to pay. one person. It's mother's, it's mother's uh, money. Yes, I think um, uh, that shows you the mentality of the um, political class or the elite. And what is it all about? Like I did say, I will cautiously use that word, state capture. They want to capture everything in the state. Yeah. And it's only in Nigeria, you see the ex 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 executive control, the judiciary control, the, 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 the lawmaking organ, you understand? The, the other day, it was in the news, our governor, Governor Oti, together with other governors who emerged victorious following the Supreme Court verdict, we are thanking the, the president. president. In their validatory, oh, sorry, in their in, in their speech, their speech they, yes. they, they were thanking the president for not interfering with the legislative.
proceeding. Now the try to situate. Right? Yes, sorry, they 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 got pro, pro, proceeding. Yes. Now try try to situate that with when Donald Trump tried to call the governor of Georgia to influence his, in certain things to um, uh, better his outcome in the 2020 election. Mm -hmm. You see that the governor stood his ground and said, no, this is, an, this is a notion of illegality and must not be allowed to stand. That is why you see in Nigeria, politicians, this is very important, this is, very, this is a very, in fact, it's the plank of my analysis today. Politicians are not elected into office where they exercise authority. They are elected into power where they become the be all and end all. And, and then call the shots, you know, including the decides the decide who lives and who does not. So, in the context we are today, you talked about this, and I say yes, it's all about the um, fact that the political class do not even have any, uh, do not even do, does not even have any regard for those they are leading. They have actually reduced us to mere figures, you understand, to numbers. We are, you just tell us about the, 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 the political class and the 200 million poor Nigerians. Mm -hmm. That's analysis every day. The political class and the 200 million Nigerians. Now, the news every day is telling you what poverty is doing in Nigeria, the inroads poverty is making. Uh, we are told now that 7 million had become poor following the cashless policy and then the world bank keeps throwing out this number and then you see that if somebody is is hungry you can hardly uh, lift up a finger for yourself that's why you see um uh, the president was actually declaring um uh, the president de de declared emergency on food crisis so, or, 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 or on food scarcity but then at the same time the lawmakers um, um, whether they were doing it to even um uh, Put a slap on our face. They passed a law to allow the poor to breed, but they sat together in the same house. Where, let me tell you this now: the budget that was passed, the 2024 budget that was passed last December. Do you know the budget has about six billion <coughs> for car parks, two car parks for House of Reps members, <laughs> and then uh, the other one for yes, yes. Then, then the same budget, the underlining now, 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 now another line item. Uh, another, another line of items said five billion naira for human rights commission. Now you are giving National Assembly six billion naira to build car parks, mm -hmm. just two, one for senators and one for rep members. Mm -hmm. Then you are giving five billion to human rights commission with thirty six officers across the state, mm -hmm. a body that will in, uh, 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 engage in, in in research, reporting, and the observance of international days of human rights and what have you and get right. This is the body you are giving five billion naira. It means they don't even have regard for our rights. You understand? So uh, all these things we hear about, let the poor breed, all those things are just mockery. Yeah, Until we begin to see the tangible evidence on ground. And what are those evidences? I mean here that the president, do you know how much President Tinubu spent in St. Regis Hotel in the United Kingdom, sorry, in the US? During the United Nations General Assembly 78 uh, uh, session, the president spent over 400 million US dollars. Together with his heads. Now we are, we we've not even talked about sorry over four hundred thousand US dollars. Now we've not even talked about the COP. How they pay Esther codes to ministers. A minister leaves the shores of this country. Per diem Esther code is one thousand naira per day. Now calculate those ministers who accompanied Buhari from the sixteenth of September through the twentieth of September. That's seven days. Seven thousand dollars. That's about seven million naira. What is the minimum wage in Nigeria? Minimum wage is uh, thirty thousand naira has not been has even not been implemented. implemented. You understand? They are, they are struggling to so, pay eighteen. Yes, so they are even struggling to, to even pay eighteen. So you see how they recognize poverty, and that is why, if a president makes someone a minister, his community, his own now will go to thank the president and say, "President, thank you for considering our child." When the law is that the president cannot rule without a cabinet. That's why people like Muhammad Buhari will take six months, ten months before they even appoint cabinet members. Because in Nigeria, the president has powers and it's not questioned. And that's why the governor will thank him. Say, thank you for not meddling in my own, in my own matter. <laughs> thank you for not interfering. When there is separation of powers and functions, when there is independence of the judiciary, when the legislature is the lawmaking organ of the, of the state. So all these things point to one thing. And you see that these persons are, are, are united. Whether they are in opposition or they are in uh, they are, uh, they are, they are in, in the incumbent party. They are united by one thing: the ambition to capture the state and right. the wealth, resources, and the instrumentalities of power thereof. Remember, like I said before, Nigerians are not elected into offices where they exercise responsibility. They are elected into power 
where they do what where they suppress all right yeah, and it's unfortunate all right uh, uh, uh honorable tony i also want you to also look at this statement that they have taken away from the people their dignity self-esteem their their self-esteem their pride and self-worth so they cannot even organize themselves to fight back yeah very simple just yesterday a soldier shot himself out of um, depression out of hopelessness you know at the times you know joining the military and as a cadet passing through the NDA or the what they call a devil you know all of that a soldier at the time was um, respected you know everybody was at the time i also i also wanted to be a soldier you know growing up i took the NDA exam and, uh, even the i started from taking the entrance of uh, the military school in Zaria and later in the year. You know, there was nobody out there to, uh, to push me. Uh, you know, no contact, no money, and I, uh, you know, I came back and uh, joined, uh, you know, business. Let me tell you that um, the front, uh, the, the early of you, you may recall, a young lady, a banker, yeah. so to speak, a banker. And when you are called a banker, you know what it means to your village people? Without knowing that um, those mini skates you are wearing, is for you know Kezaya kind of uh, approach of uh, customs hey, and uh, your mother and your father all of them will depend on you even your younger ones who have something to do it will even come back and stay back in the house that you're a banker you send them money on our own they go around a bank you can imagine that hey, you know at the end of the day frustration depression dependency your mother will be pushing to get something your father will be pushing your younger ones as far as they see you on Facebook, on your WhatsApp, you dress well, you come back home, you don't look thin, you don't look thin, much yet. And you're looking here, you're putting up a good shoe, a good shirt, you have some big phone on you. They don't even know that you may not have paid for the phone. Everybody will conclude you are doing well. And that dependency and pressure will be on you. And at the end of the day, what you take home at the end of every month is just words that cannot even take you home. You know. So they are right in this whole analysis that um, the dignity of a Nigerian citizen has been taken out you know there's no norms there's no value everybody you know does everything as he likes corruption we are talking about is not just up there is there in the street no sincerity even the woman out there selling food stuff wants to cut corner wants to do this and that you know use insecticide to spread on the fish she's selling to make sure she makes ends meet you know and all of that, everything is now a matter of go and make money because the people have lost confidence completely in the system. Nobody believes that government can do anything. And actually, they are not doing anything. Where you are living, you do everything for yourself. You provide energy for yourself. You pay for security. Why governors go home with billions of dollars every month for security vote? You pay for the road grading where you are living and so many other things. You contribute money in your community for borehole drilling. So what is government actually doing for Nigeria? Nothing. The little thing we can say that serves as a social security, the subsidy stuff they told us they were paying, which at the end of the day after its removal, we are still being told that the that government is still paying subsidy. They removed it and look at where we are today. A situation where you cannot no you can no longer you've not even taken care of yourself, not to talk about your dependents. And those who are dependent are still believing you can do it. They are still pressuring you. As early as 6 o'clock, your mother has started calling you, making demands. Your younger ones are calling. Your children are there and, you know, pushing. This is January. Go to families and see what they are doing. The pressure on families. The pressure on husbands. And this morning, I know how much I've been asked to send over for my daughter's uh, school fees. They don't even want to know whether you have the money or not. Schools are increasing, you know, kinds of trying to bring out, turn out all kinds of ladies on, on, on parents frustration everywhere you know so actually nigerians there is no how it will be very difficult for anybody to come together to meet to discuss and um, chat a, a way out of this problem because actually hunger has totally destroyed the entire system hopelessness you know in the first place a lot of people who has come out to push and talk about defending the people they really paid for it where is nam the today first of Kayomo, who is a minister today at the time was at the helm of trying to call out to the government to ask questions which are the letter and for him today where is he after shouting and ended up in prison what is he doing today he has learned to face they are joining the bandwagon 
So who will bear the cats? All That's right. All right. Let us look at this uh, before we go on a very short break. I want us to look at this. You know, it is obvious that uh, uh, the president, the current president, that's uh, President uh, Tinibu Ahmed Bola, said that Nigeria is not poor. That it is an understatement to say that Nigeria is poor. Just like uh, the uh, Lamido also said, that um, it's not about, if not for what they are doing to impoverish the people, and they will continue to do that. Now, Comrade, mm. how long are we going to continue this way? We know that Nigeria is not poor. Among, in fact, among all the rich nations of the country, Nigeria is one of them. Remember when we were referred to as the giant of Africa? Yeah. And then what is happening now? Yes, Nigeria is not poor. Um, if you look at it um, in the in, in an elitist manner or in a, from the elitist view or the angle, but structurally Nigeria is poor. Because if you, the country has money, or has wealth or ab uh, abundant resources the citizens do not even have access to do not even enjoy and then even don't even have access to basic amenities of life then that is poverty there are uh, they, 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 there are no other ways that can actually capture that except poverty and then that poverty is systemic and it is structural and i will come to it you see this statement that nigeria is not poor had been dear it being only reinforced you understand by the subsequent government yakubu go on said in the early 70s that nigeria has money but the problem was what spending and then he undertook to sponsor the budget or to pay the civil servants of a country known as granada he dared to do that but then there was an outrage public sentiment and, op and opinion went, went against him even though it was a little error then he had to now 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 listen the fact also that this political class assumes that they have weaponized poverty to the extent that the people now depend on them. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, state, I'll, and I'll tell you this. Each time a senator comes back from Abuja, you see, instead of engaging him on his outings and then even ask for the other paper or ask for things like the minute of the proceedings, yeah. they will be asking for money. You see constituents coming to tell lawmakers that my child is in the hospital, the school has reopened. They are doing this and the lawmaker yeah. is giving them money. You understand? Thinking that he's doing his job of doing or fixing projects or even attracting investment. But that's by the way. Don't you, see, you think that is because of the people? That is poverty. the same thing I'm talking about. They have people poverty to the extent that the people now depend on them. Now, I will tell you something. There is no formula for revolution. It is usually sporadic. Yeah. And, and when it happens, the status quo is overwhelmed and then stacked. Uh, and then sacked. So those status quo is, those pro establishment figures talking, they should also be careful. I will give you an example. Uh, the French Revolution, studied by historians as one of the leading hist um, uh, re revolutionary outing of the modern times, happened just like this. For over a hundred years, the assembly in the French um, system did not convene. Louis, Louis, the assistant was actually told, he said, no, no problem. No pro he continued, until the scarcity of flour and lack of bread culminated in what became what? What led to a fall of the monarch. So we have to be careful here. Even the political class, they must be careful. Now, in this country, you cannot say we've never had protests. We've had the June 12th. We've even our independence was preceded by a lot of protests, including the one our mothers here in Bacta in 1929. Even the Civil War, the Civil War was also a protest. In 1948, Abiyokuta women, they took the charge. In the 1940s, they led the protest. In, in the 1940s also, in Enugu, there was a protest by coal miners. So you do not, uh, you do not say Nigeria, we are Nigeria's poor. Poverty may eventually, somehow, and one day, become a rallying point, a unifying factor for the people you see speaking for food, speaking Igbo, people who you've been, you, who, whom you've been using religious dichotomy, cultural, cultural dichotomy to divide. One day, poverty may unite them. And right. that day, um, if care is not taken, nobody may be spared. Yeah. All right. Shortly before we go on break, uh, 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 Honorable Tony, I, I, I want you also to look at this. And it recently, what is happening in government these days is that if you are not a psychophant, a press singer, you get nothing. Uh, do you think uh, this is as a result of this uh, weaponization of uh, poverty and to ensure that you belong, then you must be a press singer? Yes, no doubt about it. I've been in this system and I know how it works. Those of us that uh, do a hard line, we, we really, we are not uh, really, we are not really, our families are not happy with us. 
<laughs> you know, I know all I passed through her. I managed as a councillor, I was elected selflessly. Who gave me their vote without cost when uh, democracy was, uh, you know, already introduced here. And uh, we went for that service, you know, carrying that intention of selflessness, you know, to give it back to the people what they gave us. But we got there, and uh, at the end of the day, kind of, I can say that we shot ourselves. Some of us, you know, can say that actually, with what is, you know, prevalent today, shot ourselves on the lake. Because uh, your family, because even my own father, you know, my late father was telling me that no, 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 that, no, 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 making policies and trying to bring ideas. If you want to sell share guns and share weapons for election hijacking, the youth should be used. At the end of the day, they pushed overboard and then you can see that's uh, how Boko Haram, you know, got, yeah. got, got, got here. What happened in, in Bruno State during those days of Sheriff and all the rest of it hmm. was using the youths to get what they want. At yeah. the end of the day, the elections were won and they were pushed out and they got angry. You know. So, I want to tell you that in our political system today, even if a uh, politician just like our governor here today was part of here, the opposition, mm. he was a very strong sole opposition. Never allowed PDP to, you know, uh, sleep with their two eyes closed. Was uh, interfering in everything as regards the interest of the people. But today, I'm afraid if the governor will also open heartedly welcome opposition even though he has told us you are free to criticize us you are free to tell me but at the end of the day raise your finger those is media handlers will, will they will want to bring you down yes, I, 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 I want to briefly chip in something before we go on please, please, because please, it's very please. important i make this intervention sicko fancy you just said is the bane of nigerian politics and i love that the fact that you use the word sicko fancy you see recently i will just let me let me let me let me limit it to one character now Really recently, we saw a sort of reconciliation, although that was what it looks at the optics in the optics there that of Daniel Daniel Boala, the man who was critical, who was vocally critical of the of the president now when he was standing as the flag bearer oh, of the that? APC. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. So Daniel Boala had actually crossed that side. Do you, do you know what, what, what he said? He had come to congratulate the president and to commend him for what he's been doing. He doesn't care what anybody is feeling, including his former principal, yeah. Ajiko Babaka. So you see, politicians, are, uh, you, they, they don't just go alone. They have hangers on. They have hangers on. They have cronies. They have allies. Uh, those who those some, some people call bootlickers. But in Nigeria, colloquially, we have what we call Ajib. Any government in, in power. power. Uh, and they must be there. Some of them are seeking, uh, 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 are seeking contracts. Some are seeking appointments. Some are seeking to be given oil well. Some are looking for many things. So that's why you begin to see them, the way they talk. And they, 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 they hate any reactionary force. You understand? General Day Buari was talking and was saying uh, he was happy. Just just only yesterday, the, the first time he came to he he he, he came, came to Abuja after leaving, you understand? He said he was happy. They have written this book about him to capture the records. He uh, that, that the records were there in public domain, and that they had actually beaten revisionist re, 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 to their game. But, but but the fact remains that under Muhammad Buari, more than 33 million Nigerians became poor, and that under Muhammad Buari, ways and means. Which to that 900 billion naira became 23 trillion naira. So uh, it is still the same thing. And people, someone wrote that book out of sicko fancy. Yes. Someone wrote that book. But then that, that, that is what history will dissect and explain. All right, the, remember, the, the, the he, he equally apologized to Nigerians and. Before uh, he left. Yes, I, you know, yeah. he equally apologized to Nigerians even this morning. All right, uh, wonderful listeners, uh, we are going to go on a very short break. Remember, nobody is praying for breaking Nigeria into pieces, but all we are saying is that the, our leaders, our, govern, our government, our leaders should do the right thing at the right time. And for a leader to stand up one day and say Nigeria cannot break because they have so weaponized they have so weaponized uh, uh, you know uh, poverty poverty is now institutionalized you know by the government themselves it is something it is something to worry about we will go on a short break when we come back we will continue 
with issues of the moment. Which way, Nigeria, now?
Amen. Listening to your favorite program, Issues of the Moment. In today's Issues of the Moment, we're looking at Nigerian Zatu Puerto Revolt and then a statement credited to, as alleged, credited to one of our governors in Nigeria here, Governor Sule Lamido of Jigawa State. Not just that, we also know that in, in Abia State here, one time Governor of Abia State also made a, such a statement when he said he can never em empower his uh, enemy. And then the question becomes, these are common patrimony. The money we are talking about, is it owned by this governor? Is it owned by this leader? Or is it money generally owned by all of us? And where do we go from here? Because he who walks alone is in front and behind. Well, as usual, I still have your award discussion, and uh, that is uh, the analyst in the house today as we move on right now. This time, I will be starting with you, Honorable Tony Abanyam. Now, in that statement also, he said um, they the elites that they will never allow Nigeria break because once it breaks, that they will lose. And that the common man, and the common man loses nothing. What is he losing? He is already in hell. He cannot lose anything more than the hell. And uh, that is to say that this thing is a deliberate act, and then it has continued. There is no remedy to it. Aulo, during the war, he was the uh, Minister of Finance, and all of us know what he told the head of states. Block the borders. Let them be hungry. That hunger is what? The legitimate weapon of war. My brother, he never chop, you go carry AK-47. It's possible. It's <laughs> not possible now. You know, so they know exactly, the man is just saying these things as, there, as, as it is. But um, I think a day of reckoning will come and to remind him all of this he's saying. He has been there, he's a former external affairs minister and the governor of Jigawa State for eight years. He has seen it all, he has, um, he has already prepared his family for even up to his unborn children, you know, grandchildren. Yeah. So he's saying it right, but I want to tell you that um, one constant thing I know is changed. Gaddafi, in his widest imagination, can't even believe that at the end he would. In fact, he was already preparing his son to be the next take over, you know, yes. president. And uh, you can see where he is today. Look at our brother there, they said, that was lifted there during the war, Omar Bongo. He said he's from Mkwere, my place, and uh, got to Gabon and he was adopted by the uh, former president of, uh, uh, of uh, Gabon. He behaved well as an Igbo man, he's an Mkwere man. And the man really loved him and adopted him and he became his son and he became president for over 30 years or there about and wanted to continue. And at the end of the day, sick, bedridden, uh, you know, with stroke. And has already started preparing his son to take over. You can imagine that. So all of these things they are saying and I know that just a matter of time, it will, um, what, uh, you know, uh, comes around, goes around. What are we trying to say here? Poverty has actually crippled this country. The poor man cannot do nothing. Nobody can call for revolution. But my brother here said something, that that poverty may end up being a rallying point. Here we don't have a rallying point. Like in the Arab world, they have a rallying point. Yeah. On a Friday, they will meet there in the mosque. Exactly. And take off from there. That was exactly what happened in Tunisia, happened in Libya, happened in, in, uh, in, in Egypt, and all the rest of them. One day, that poverty may be a rallying point. In this country, who will allow you to go for a revolution? Your bishop. He won't allow you to do that. You know, your traditional ruler. Nobody will try to do that. From the family front, your mother will tell you, you are the only child I have here. You are the only hope for this family. You know the, the, the culture in Ibo land. When a little boy is sent for the apprenticeship, then the entire family will anchor their fortune and their future around that little boy. <laughs> you know, and you say you want, to go, you want to go and join a riot. You can imagine what happened during the instance stuff. And uh, you will now tell me that anybody in this country will again allow your child. Or rather, what everybody is planning to raise money and send your child up there in the Western world where things work normal. And you go there and pick dollars because they know that the currency and the economy will continue to lose life. So go there and get the dollar because the dollar is heading towards 5,000 naira to get there. Because at the time, it was $1, one, one, dollar, one naira for two dollars. My senior brother, my uncle, from River State, traveled to United States and 
at just landing in Baltimore in America, he had 700 naira. That 700 naira was over $2,000. And it was, you know, deemed to be a big man. All of them that went to America in the 70s and early 80s. And 80s, yeah. Little money they went to it. 700 naira. You can imagine. I saw, a, I met a friend yesterday, a uh, former House of Assembly member, Abraham Albert, that the first time he went to London, his flight ticket was 350 naira. And he said 300,000. 350 naira, his first flight ticket to UK. And look at where we are today. How much is it? So go and make money in London, you, uh, Canada, or America. That's what every family is planning now, how to send their children out, because they know that this place is irreparable. It, it, it was not wired to work. And it has continued to manifest that this place actually is not wired to work. A situation where a civil servant will work from the beginning of the month to the end, and you owe him for six months, and the governor will courageously One year. face the, the press and tell them, oh, this other state is owing 13 months. We are owing only four months. You can imagine that kind of country. Does it happen anywhere? It doesn't happen anywhere. It's only in Nigeria you can see that kind of a thing. And you're talking about people being patriotic. No way it cannot work. You're talking about fighting corruption. It can, because that man that is on a paycheck doesn't believe in that system. So if you bring any file to his table, my brother, you will drop something. If you don't drop anything, you get nothing. You can imagine a situation where our regulatory agencies, food and, and drug regula regulatory agencies, their staff are being owed salaries of three months and more. And these are people that are working to save your life and your health. And you're owing them salary. If anybody brings any poison there to, the, to their table and drops money, he takes the money because he's not sure of his salary. All right. All right, uh, comrade, looking at it this way, I also want us to look at that this way because uh, in that statement, if you look at it very well, what it simply means is that the the common man in Nigeria is so squalid, wretched, and uh, in hell. And also there is a statement that is so touching. He said that no matter how they quarrel, they're the elites in Nigeria, and then you think they're quarreling. They are only using it to, dis to deceive the public. Yes. They know themselves. They still come back okay, and know what yeah, they're doing. Okay. Yes, and that, 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 that will be uh, over. Uh, is it, about, is it uh, a bottle of beer now or uh, the uh, exotic uh, wines and uh, champagne? Uh, yeah, we saw some of them drinking uh, online, and then they were even using it against themselves. Yes, that, uh, yes, that, uh, yes millions, uh, millions, uh, millions, uh, millions of naira. Uh, 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 yes, uh, being accused of, of taking such and then a, a senator sitting somewhere accusing a, a, a governor of our own state of of of, of consuming exotic wines and the rest of but that's the the the, the whole thing but, but, but you see there is something about it we must actually capture um there is this assumption in the minds of the of the elite us and them you know you understand us and them there, there is no middle class you are either rich or you are poor poor in, in Nigeria, and, 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 and that's the fact. And I, will, and, I will, and I will explain better. You see, it is only in Nigeria that a government, a government will be shameless, not bold this time around, will be shameless to put inscription on a vehicle it, uh, it purchased for the police and say, this vehicle was donated by Governor A.B. That's a uh, no administration. Longer the no longer the government, no longer the people. No longer the taxpayers. Even some infrastructure. And you begin to see that they will build roads and they will put their names. You understand? They even immortalize themselves. Why there? Why still there? I they will, they will now, question, uh, yeah. <laughs> I live in this town. You yes. Are, you are from this town. Yes. Right? Yes. During those days of Mbakwe, mm -hmm. was any road in Aba flat off? Was any road in Aba commissioned? We are even oh. battling to rename to rename Fox Road after the man. After after the man. mostly after Mbakwe. This is Mbakwe would have been, been Mbakwe hotel. Have, have okay. Mbakwe hotel. International glass and dust. Yeah. And today, you know the kind of money that is spent on flagging off a road that was abandoned yes. for years. For years. And money that will be spent on media alone. I was told that the day we came here to flag off. Um, the, the flyover to the flyover to commission the flyover. Mm. I was told authoritatively that because he's a media person, he single-handedly paid 40 million naira to bring all the media houses. 40 million just to be had commissioning a flyover of less than. I think it, uh, can you just, so you can see that. So it, it's all about them and us oh. in the mentality, and that is why it's, it's not going to work. You see, we don't even have regard for the Commonwealth. It, 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 it's seen as a personal thing for them. You understand? And that's, that, that accounts or that explains why a sitting and serving minister will write an order, express order, 
telling the accountant general of the federation to pay with dispatch certain amount of money into private account that is also the reason why accountant general of the federation could wake up one day and dip his hands into the coffers of federation and steal 109 billion naira yes. as we speak today that one has not then the pension the pension scheme when Goodluck Jonathan said he was reforming the pension scheme, we brought they brought one man, Abdul Rashid Maina. Oh yeah, come and sit down. The same man looted over two billion naira. And when he was even being apprehended by I the, say by two the billion. hundred billion. Uh, uh, when, when he was being apprehended by the, the son, drew uh, a gun the out. Yes, pull, pull, pull the gun. You understand? And threatened to shoot the law enforcement. So this is the kind of country we are in. And it will it, it, it interest you know that, that these persons will not even spend much time in detention and they will be out. We've had now EFCC is reopening cases and I was asking to what end. Uh, now governor former governor Odile, former governor Theodore, his own wow. case is about over five hundred billion naira. You can imagine if that happens to be true. Five hundred billion naira. So what is left of the state? Now you see that the, the, these cases have been reopened. But at the point, at the time, you're going to ask why is it that after all the noise, after all the bruhaha, the whole thing will just die down? How does it happen? So, uh, 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 we've never had a closure to any corrupt matter, whether you say to, to any corruption um, issue, whether, whether, whether it was the one about a former governor of this state here, whose case we know how it ended. You understand? Even, even, even after court, after, uh, 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 after court hearing, the, the until we met it a focus or a point of focus. In our system, you know, to make sure that nobody goes scot free if found wanting. What, what we see today is um, imagine um, a central bank governor paying 300 million naira for bail. So, after that, what happens? All right, uh, after that, what happens? That's a good question. Also, uh, let us also look at this, um, honorable talking about, talking about this, and then it is obvious that what they normally do, they've agreed within themselves and. Uh, as they loot this money, they ensure that nothing is delivered to the constituencies. And they have uh, all they do is to ensure that these people are, are poor on daily basis so that there will be no challenges. But how long shall we continue this way? Let me tell you that um, the politicians have said it several on several platforms that um, these people will be the first you meet in heaven. Let me tell you, these guys, we, the politicians, can easily reconcile, no matter how much you see them quarrel, insult each other on national TV and radio. Brother, uh, Obas and Joe and the Tinibu <coughs> hugged the other day. You can imagine that. And so, it made the news that yeah, they were hugging and imagine, they were shaking. You can imagine. So at the end of the day, they will meet and resolve their problem over a glass of champagne and meet in one political platform and chat a new course. And everybody forget about what happened in the other area. You know, so that is how this old uh, uh, what you call it, former governor Tiaj was with Dodge Carl the PPA and all that. Yeah. And at the end of the all of us were throwing stones, casting aspersions, just in the, at the time people were even calling me to other nah, why you know, I was still governor. You know, during our campaigns I told my you know what I do for the party, you know. But at the end of the day, the man did a U turn. We met and started down after I want to tell you that prior to twenty 11 election the campaign i was at the center i was the, i was the anchor person at the center at the end of every that campaign of, of that campaign we would drive straight to the government house with this same governor we are throwing those on some days years ago and eat with him one-on-one -on -one. and the, you know the man is just a village man he's not the type that raises sand mm -hmm. like what to have today and rather mm -hmm. you know he will drink from the same bottle the same cup the same take food from the same plate with us it's thing governor but yesterday we were enemies you know so that is how these guys have plotted this whole thing against the the the, 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 the society. You know, that's why at the end of the day, what they bother about because they know you are hungry. At the end of every during every festive period, we are heading towards Easter, isn't it? Yeah. Not fine. Okay, the one that will come next week is um, uh, Valentine's Day, Lover's Day. They will come and we are green and red and white with you and celebrate with you and share some gifts and oh they would say oh, oh this guy is so simple oh very calm very down to earth you wouldn't know that his own family is celebrating that same valentine in bahamas or italy but you are here at one joint you know drinking yourself to stupor over a little money you will release during christmas you see them coming back home to share ice and we're the quarreling why should anybody in 21st century world 
somebody's still talking about sharing of rice. It became a television and news script. It became a television news. All the radio stations and all media platforms we are celebrating that Governor Carl is saying, oh, the rice are shared by the oh, uh, I've been people in my personal money. That of federal government have not received. You can imagine right. Sharing of rice. All right. So yeah. it means you've actually been captured. Yeah. By where anyway you look at it, the police has captured us. The you can imagine our power that came here the other and promised us seven and eight. That uh, make up for he's not uh, he's, he's, uh, he doesn't know anything about he knows nothing uh, next to nothing about, about power uh, about power that he's an expert globally respected all of us believe him today a make up for the street boy is not better than him you can see where we are you can see the policemen here in Aba we are every young man every young man on the street of Aba between the age of eighteen and thirty he's not a thief is it so nobody struggles again. No hustling again in Abba. If they see you with any flashy car, a young man, you are now a Yahoo Plus. Abba, an entrepreneurial town. People that are known since 1904 as strugglers. Today, every young man in Abba is a thief. They've captured us and nobody's said anything. And they'll tell you, I'll kill you, nothing will happen. And they must keep quiet. All right. So, we've been captured all around. Politicians have captured us. The civil servants have captured us. If you take your file, go to the immigration to talk about your passport. If you don't drop money, you won't get it. Yeah. Exactly. Just to go and get a voter card, you will also pay. Go and get national ID card, you will pay. Go to NEPA, you will pay everywhere. You know, the, the, the discos and the whatever. You, if you don't drop money, you don't get nothing. Because oh. they know you can't organize yourself. You can't come, come together because everybody is afraid. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to make sacrifice. All right, um, comrade. Look, uh, uh, comrade. Looking at uh, what is happening because of our time. Mm. Now, the way, when you talk about these, uh, these institutionalized uh, poverty, mm. and then and then uh, this idea of uh, palliatives here and there, mm. don't you think that they are making even humans like animals? Because if people are paid their salaries as at when due, and then the normal things are done, rules are built, even pipe bond waters and so on. If these things are there. But in those days in politics it's not they are not supposed to be promises. But these yeah. are supposed to be the people's right, the taxpayers' right. Yes. But today that's what they use. And this let us look at this palliative. I want you to look at this palliative they said they give. Mm -hmm. And then uh, even the one that was uh, for Abia and today it is only those who are close to either the governor or the party that receives it. Is, uh, is this not a way of even calling the uh, members of the society animals? You see, one thing about politics is uh, the discrimination that has attended it since inception, or from the get-go of democracy, or from the get-go of Nigeria in independence 1960. Um, it's unfortunate that, it, like I did say here, I established that dichotomy, us and them. Us and them. That's just that, that, that very dichotomy, us and them. A, a political dichotomy, us and them. If you are not for us, you are for them or with them. And if you are with them, you are not amongst us. So anything they are sharing is just about themselves, their family members and the rest. Um, you see, we've had a system where uh, governor's wives travel abroad, uh, just every other day they are in abroad, they are back today, the next day they travel again. Whereas um, the people who elected this government um, struggle to make ends meet or to, uh, to find um, uh, their life or to find their feet or even their livelihood yes you asked a very beautiful question um but the fact remains like i have been saying before a system where everything you see um we 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 have been we are, as in we, we have been captured like uh honorable said that even our thinking the worst is that our psychology our thinking had been captured you see, so when these people are returning, our people are the ones making noise for them, mm. uh, telling them honorable, even saluting them, telling them welcome, and then begin to enumerate or even begin to list problems you want them to to solve for you. But the, the whole fact there remains that the work of a lawmaker is to do what? Make law, represent you, and then oversight. But unfortunately, we've jettisoned all those practices. What we now do is we expect the governor, even if the governor is underperforming, Try to um, interrogate. You see his brothers and his clansmen will now come to say, ah, he's one of us, leave him more, he's our turn. Because we have actually built this system, it's difficult. We don't even have Nigeria yet. Don't forget, we don't even have Nigeria. So I think solving this problem will depend on how realistic the, the, the government will be in having a national dialogue. Good Lord, merely achieve that feat. But at the same time, he just said, I wouldn't know why 
Uh, because every time I sit to talk about the Nigeria of today, especially the Nigeria of the Fourth Republic, the largest chunk of the blame I have, I heap it on Gulo Jonathan. You understand? He was the president under whose watch and under whose tutelage. For the first time, Nigerians went to a conference. See, the 1914 amalgamation was not a conference. You understand? The Berlin conference was not a conference about Africans. It was a conference about the superpowers on how to share and partition Africa. You understand? Amongst themselves. But the first time Nigerians ever came to even independence was partly negotiated by Britain. You understand? Even the public status we attend uh, in 1963 was also partly a making of the British authority to the extent that, yes, to the extent that at that time they were still in our civil service. But in 2014, we had a, we have a country where for the first time, the North, the West, the South, South they agreed that additional states be given to the Southeast. They agreed also that revenue formula, the, the sharing formula, where the government, the, the, the government at the center takes 52%, the state takes about 22 and the local government takes about 21 or so. Then you have the one that goes to consolidated revenue. They agreed to revisit this formula that the states will have significant chunk of the revenue. All these agreements, they discussed it, whether they finalized it or not. But the president then failed to put them into work. And that is why we come back here again to talk about poverty that will not let up. We come back here again to talk about inflation that will not stop. And we talk about, we come back here again to talk about Jackpot Syndrome, where our best had now been absorbed. Now listen, in the next 10 years, we may not even have plumbers walking walk and entering our streets. Canada, the Canadian, Australian government, they are now looking for what? Plumbers. They are looking for them, even carpenters, even mechanics. I'm, I'm not talking about medical doctors now or lawyers or even um, uh, economists whom they are looking for uh, skilled and semi-skilled they are now looking for people you may not even have so uh, at the end of the day i don't even know what will be left of this country if here is not taken and that is why it should be in the interest of the president to make sure he gets his act right to make sure he fixes this country to work for everybody if he continues this way the kind of budget we are seeing them pass into law the kind of proposal we are seeing them uh, 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 carry out where you begin to buy you bought national assembly members vehicle of over 50 billion naira and you are using 6 billion to build car to to build, build car, park. car park. so 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 to me it makes no sense all right and it's not to even talk about the billions of naira going to be used to build um the house for vice president and the wife of the president you know all those things all right so it doesn't make sense all right uh comrade uh, before we call it a quit today before we leave this place now do you think because of this uh weaponization of uh, poverty by our uh, so-called rulers and so on do you think that is why there is too much do or die affair in political uh, in in office uh, seeking uh, politicians yes the do or die uh, syndrome uh, which even Obasanjo amplified that in 2000 and i think 2007 when he said the election then was a do or die affair so when interrogated he said it was he meant it for pdp alone well what that means he alone can explain you see the do or die thing has a beginning it also has an end okay it, yes it starts with build up to any election you understand then after the polls then we then then then, then the court a government seats people be, begin now to cross over to the other political party to build fences and and and, and then to to merge you understand and, and, and form alliances that's when they do that but, but then poverty itself is perpetual here it's, all right it's not stopping and it's not letting up all right uh, uh honorable i wanted to look at it just a few seconds so that uh we, we 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 round up. What what is happening these days because of uh, this uh, weaponization of uh, poverty? Do you think it is also the, that the moment you are elected into as, either as a senator, as a new person, or as a federal house of assembly member, governor, or chairman, that automatically you now belong to that elite, irrespective of where you're coming from? Let me tell you just a very simple. Uh, everybody knows that you know. Looking at the entire system, the economic system has failed. The security system has failed, the social system has failed, the traditional system has failed. Don't know works here any longer, except political position. Can you predict the economy of this country in the next six months? But go to Britain, go to America, they, they can tell you where the economy will be in the next six months. Look at what the Naira design has done to us. Look at Buhari, who now brought capitals to be economic managers. You know. So what do you expect today? Who and who are the economic managers of uh, Tribu's administration? So the only thing to do in Nigeria, now everybody's not a politician. The Labour Party, then you can go there, it was just about Tabasa on the right day, and the entire 
councillors or the entire DC members. I've not seen one or any of them in any political gathering. Just new guys in there. And they thought uh, they were coming to start carrying money with a sack back every morning. Go there, they are all complaining. You know, so the belief is that, oh, try sell everything you have. You can imagine the how the local government election are being conducted there, where the guys that are coming were not properly informed. They even sold their land, their properties to come and become councillors. And got there and realized that the only thing you have authority over is your salary when it comes. They thought that at the end of every month, the chairman will bring the allocation. Maybe after going through the national daily, they saw that Abarat was getting 220 million every month. Abarat, 250 million. Oh, wow, what is that? The money will be dropped on the table and another one might get rich. And then those days, it's not working that way. So everybody now believes that the only thing that functions is um, electro, uh, you know, uh, political office. And that's why people are selling all kinds of things, doing all kinds of things, going out of their ways, trying to join all kinds of associations and groups, both those that go in the afternoon and those that uh, function in the night, to win a political position. Because if you win, eventually, definitely, just a matter of join and sign one resolution, you start buying land in hybrid areas in town. So that's it. But your business doesn't work like that. Your container you brought in from China, at the end of the day, you may come back here and lose your deposit and start all our friends again. All right. So that's the issue here. Okay, wonderful listeners. Uh, this is the much we're going to take. But before we leave the saying, um, comrade, what's your final take? Okay, my final take is uh, the political class should be conscious and careful the kind of statement they, ma they make because we've uh, actually, uh, in the course of this uh, whole narration, we've actually uh, been pointed and then highlighted where, who said what, like I did mention, go on, what is it? All those things are provocative statements. As well, at a time like this, you can't be telling Nigerians to endure and we'll be hearing this. And I want to believe this statement will soon be debunked by the person it was accredited to. Thank you. All right, uh, Honorable. How to make this society a classless society where everybody is equal? where nobody is above the law. Until we open our radios and television sets and see our former heads of state on handcuffs in the courtroom, in the, what they call, um, witness boxes. Until they, those things start happening here, nothing will function. Until the judicial system starts working. Until the lawyers and those operating the judicial system stops cashing out and really tell us what the law, the constitution is all about, not just trying to make money out of everything and, you know, set us on the path of violence and the anger. Because today, you can hear that all the judgments that were given, uh, you know, within the context, look at it very critically, so you can see that you know that actually that they weren't read really what the law or the constitution says it's all about. Get the money, as far as it is, the court of finality, give that judgment and nothing will happen. Until you go out of that and do the right thing, nothing will really change here. All right, for our wonderful listeners, respect the say does not mean cowardice, but a court can break when they respect it, does not reciprocate to that respect. This is where we are coming to the end of this program. Whichever office you're seeing yourself, are you a member of the State House of Assembly, the National Assembly, the Governor, and so on? Remember, you are there representing people. Look at what happened in the Parliament in, the, in Gambia, where a woman stood her ground and told the Speaker and those ahead and said, it, it said enough is enough it's time to stop loofing and let us remember the people that brought us here and also do them fine the idea of the moment you become a politician you now become a god a demigod that should be worshipped and others others becomes nothing or trying to weaponize poverty using poverty as a weapon you know to break the legs and hands of uh, the people you are leading it is bad let us change. Nigeria will still be a better place tomorrow. Having said that, from my far left, I have a honorable Tony Abanya democracy. Democracy, we are pleased to have you here today. Yeah, thank you for continuing to do this. And uh, comrade Namde Lekwachi, we are so pleased to have you here today. Thank you for having me. It always is a pleasure. And this is your anchor man, Chinedum Godson Adele. Until another day, to have a wonderful day.
which way to go. I love my fatherland. Oh, yeah. I want to know. find it hard to start How long shall we be patient before we reach the promised land Let's save Nigeria so Nigeria won't
Amen. <laughs>